Today in the news, we got yet another Intel delay, and AMD's APUs are looking pretty good. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. On the last video, we talked about leaked information in Intel's drivers related to their upcoming discrete GPUs. The leak was on a DG2 GPU with 512 execution units. At first glance, 512 execution units, aka 4096 stream processors, seems like a great introduction for Intel in the desktop market. It would be like a mid-range GPU, and a move like that from Intel would be similar to AMD's strategy of introducing a high quality mid-range card first, that was the 5700 series for AMD, and then maybe going bigger next year. Well, if this new information from Bloomberg is correct, it looks like the DG2 with 512 EUs will not hit the desktop market, or at least not this year, or the next. According to Bloomberg, Intel is in talks with TSMC and Samsung to outsource some chip production. As is, we already knew that Intel was looking at TSMC to produce some or part of their chips, both the XEIO tile for their monstrous Ponte Vecchio architecture and their XEHPG products, aka the gaming GPUs. In that article, their sources, who wanted to remain anonymous, said that any components that Intel might source from Taiwan wouldn't come to market until 20. 2023. Yikes. That would mean that the GPUs that Intel promised in, I think, 2018 for 2020 are going the way of the 10 nanometers and getting delayed. Hard. Now you might say, but Intel did release discrete graphics in laptops last year. Yes, but why show an actual desktop GPU in the teaser video from two years ago? Anyways, with that said, it looks like we won't see a proper GPU from Intel this year. And once again, according to the article, Intel will likely stick with a current existing process, which means either seven nanometers or five nanometers. Plus, Intel has an event coming up and they apparently reshuffled a lot of the roadmap. So it might just be about Rocket Lake S, for desktops at least. There's for sure the Tiger Lake H, which are coming up for fairly soon. Moving on, we got AMD. Now, this is just interesting to me. It seems like, once again, the company had a change of heart on their naming scheme for the current RX 6000 series. A Chip Hell forum user stumbled across an engineering sample for a Navi 2X GPU, and it was actually called the 5900 XT. When he got it, it didn't work out of the box with AMD software, so he flashed an ASRock Tai Chi VBIOS for a 6800 XT into it, and it worked. Looking at the tests the owner did on the GPU, the 5900 XT actually turned out to be the 6800 XT that we see now, and the scores are extremely similar. You can see that this card actually has three display ports and one HDMI instead of two DPs, one HDMI, and one USB C. It's kind of a downgrade, honestly, depending on who you ask. Me. <laughs> Also, in AMD, if you were patiently waiting for them to release an APU, it looks like you will not be disappointed. An engineering sample for the 5700G has just popped up, and it looks pretty good. As it was with the 4000 series of APUs, the 5000 series will also top out at 8 cores and 16 threads. In terms of clock speed, the 5700G will have a boost of 4.4 GHz. While this seems pretty low, it is an overclockable CPU. The person who leaked the APU APU was able to achieve a pretty good 4.7 gigahertz, which nets a score of 647 points in single core and 6960 in multi-core when running the CPU-Z benchmark. That's about 3% under the single core score of a stock 8-core 5800X and about 3% faster in multi-core. Now sure, it's overclocked, but still, that's pretty impressive for a CPU that, according to the current leaks, would cost $300 US when bought in bulk, so it'd be about $300 150 to 400 bucks if it hits retail. Just as a refresher, the 5800X is $450. And even if the 5700G was 450 bucks, you get some sweet, sweet bonus Vega graphics with it. On top of that, you get the advantage of this CPU being made with a single die. Now, why is this important? Well, in the 4000G series of APUs, the Infinity Fabric was much more flexible with a base clock of 2000 megahertz and enthusiasts were able to 
to push it well above 2100 megahertz thanks to the single die design. AMD is currently still struggling to update their AGISA to make even 2000 megahertz possible for consumers on the current Zen 3 based CPUs. I mean, they did allude to it being possible, but I've seen a lot of threads with people struggling to even get to 1900 megahertz on the F clock. Now, let's go back to this if it hits retail comment that I made. Unfortunately, the 4000G series was not available for purchase at retail, but AMD did say that APUs for desktops are coming. Personally, I don't think that the company is planning to make yet another line of APUs exclusive to OEMs. It just wouldn't make sense. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. In any case, this 5700G will likely make its first appearance during AMD's CES event, which is taking place on Tuesday the 12th at 11 a.m. That's Eastern time. That's in two days, folks, so strap up. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.